Alright, today everybody we're going to be going over chapter 7, section 4. We're dealing with what's called int roots. Now you guys have simplified radicals before, but now we're not just dealing with square roots, we're dealing with cubic roots. We're dealing with the fifth root of something. Okay? So right now, we need to label some things. This number, 5, right here, refers to the fifth root of this fraction of negative 1024 over 243. This number 5 is referred to as the index of that radical. It's called the index. This part that I'm going to highlight in green, that part right there is just the radical sign. All right? And this fraction right here is called the radicate. Let's go. Okay. Now, before we start this problem, what I'd like you to do is we're going to make a little table in the journal. Okay? You can move it, you can move it to the right if you want to. Okay? You can do two to the first, three to the first, four to the first. We're going to keep, keep this pattern going. Don't worry, we're not going to do it forever. Gotta make a little more sense. Alright, we're going to stop the power of five. The capacity of five. There we go. Now all we're going to do is we're going to evaluate each of these. We're going to start with the column of twos. Okay? We know two to the first power is two. Two squared gets us four. Two to the third jumps all the way up to an eight. Notice we're multiplying an additional two to all of these numbers. So two to the fourth will get us a sixteen. And finally two to the fifth jumps us all the way up to a thirty-two. So basically, every single one of these numbers is simply multiplied by another 2. That's how you can get that column of 2. Let's try 3's. 3 to the first is 3. What's 3 squared? 9. 3 to the third? Uh, 27, right? Good job. 27 times an additional 3 gets me all the way up to an 81. 81. And then 81 multiplied by another 3 is 243. Now I'm going to highlight this 243 because I think we're going to use that. 4 to the first. 4 to the second. 4 squared. 16. 4 to the third. 4 to the fourth. 254. And 4 to the fifth. 1024. Hmm. I'm going to highlight this guy right here. Cool. All right, now that we know that 3 to the 5th is 243, and 4 to the power of 5, or 4 to the 5th, is 1024, I'm going to move back over to our problem. Now, we're going to rewrite this, everybody. We're going to rewrite this as the 5th root. I'm going to put a negative 1 right here in the numerator, negative 1 times, and I'm going to change 1024 to 4 power of 5 over, I'm going to do the fifth root of 243. What can I change that to? 3 to the power of 5. So do you guys see where I <clears throat> That was 4 to the power of 5. I think I have the other one in blue. We go back over here. Right? 3 to the 5th is 243. And 4 to the 5th was 1024. Now, let's go back to when we just simplified basic radicals. Everybody knows what the square root of 25 is, right? What is the square root of 25? 5. five. Why is the square root of 25 5? What is our index for this radical? Our index is a 2. 
And what does 25 break down to? It breaks down to a 5 times a 5. So square roots, square roots look for groups of what? Groups of 2. And do I have a group of 2 right here? Yep, that's a 5. What does a fifth root of something look for? Not groups of 2, but groups of 5. And I'm, I don't want to really write it out, but I will just this once. Four and the fifth actually means you have how many fours being multiplied together? Yeah, exactly. So, I'm going to erase all these things. So right now, I want you guys to understand that the fifth root of four to the fifth power just is the number four. The fifth root, right here, the fifth root of three to the fifth power is just a three. Well, what is the fifth root of a negative one going to equal? That actually just equals negative one. So that's my final answer is going to be negative four over three. Now here's where students get confused. Like, why is the fifth root of a negative one negative one? And here's my response. When you have a negative and you multiply it to itself an odd number of times, it stays a negative. So for example, I have a negative 1, and I raise it to the power of 1, that stays a negative 1. If I have a negative 1 and I square it, what happens? It becomes a positive 1. Moving down. If I have negative 1 to the third power, negative 1. Negative 1 to the fourth power, positive 1. Here we go. Negative 1 to the power of 5 is actually equal to a Negative one. So what is the what is the fifth root of negative one still equal to? Negative one. That's why I was able to pull out just a negative sign. So whenever you have an odd number in the index and you have a negative inside the radical, you know you will always pull out a what? A negative. So there's my final answer for problem number one. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna jump jump on to problem number two. All right, everybody. Why do I like the number 243 when it's inside of the fifth root? Because it's what? Because 243 is the same as saying what? 3 to the power of 5. Now, x to the 10th can also be rewritten as x to the 5th times x to the 5th. That's one way of looking at it. It's not the only way of looking at it. But how many sets do I have of 5 inside of an x to the power of 10? I have two sets, so I'm going to highlight. I've got a set here, I've got a set here. And I only got one of these over. Alright? So what, oh, I apologize. That's not supposed to be a tree. That's supposed to be a 5. Alright? So the fifth root of 3 to the power of 5 is simply what is by itself what is the fifth root of x to the fifth by itself x to the third. so what am I going to pull out I'm going to pull out an, an x what's this going to be that's going to be another what that's going to be another x so what will my final answer be 3x squared that's my final answer for number 2 now here's a shortcut, all right? What I do is I look at the index, everybody. I look at the index, okay? And I look at the power. And I ask myself, self, can this index divide evenly into that power? Yes, it can. Five goes into 10 how many times? Three, two times. So let me show you a quick little shortcut, ready? Let's try to do an example on this. Put this in your journal. What if I said the sixth root all right, of, we'll say, 243, but I said x to the 12. All right, that, that was your problem, okay? Now, by the way, what do we know three, four, 243 is equal to? Oh, bummer. That's 3 to the power of, no, we don't have enough, do we? All right, but, ooh. That could be broken down to what? X to the 6th and 
x to the sixth. So we have how many sets in there? Six goes into 12 how many times? Two. So we can have, on the outside, we can have, what, x squared. And what do we have on the inside? The sixth root of 243. That would be the simplified version. So remember, you have to have that number in order for it to get pulled out. You've got to have six, right? Not five. You've got to have one. Number of six. So let's go to, on to the next one. And Austin get it up. Alright, let's look over here at problem number three. Okay? So put that in your journal. Before we do problem number three, we're going to go over a quick little concept of dealing with negatives inside of radicals. Here we go. What if I said, what is the square root of negative one by itself? What would everybody say the square root of negative one by itself is equal to? I. All right, the square root of negative one is equal to I. Okay? So if I said, what is the square root of a negative seven, you would say that is equal to I radical seven. Now, let's go, go over another concept. If I said, what is the square root of a squared? Then we'll do, what is the square root of a third? And what's the square root of a to the fourth? Square roots look for groups of what? Groups of two. All right, so even though you don't see it in the index, what's always going to be there? The number two. So what is the square root of a squared? A. What's the square root of a cubed? Yeah, and a would come out, what's still left inside of the radical? Because the square root of a squared is a, would you agree this is a times a times a, and there's my what? There's my group of two, so that's why the a comes out. Please. Alright? Why can that come out? Because there's two of them, right? How about this? I have A times A times A times A. How many sets of two do I have? Two. So this becomes a what? This becomes A squared. So you have a, there's a pair. There's a pair. Does everybody see how this one right here is still, that's why that's left inside the radical, because it doesn't have a the correct number in order to get out. Now, do you guys remember anything that's important about absolute value bars when you have an even index? Two of these answers should have absolute value bars around the variables. Okay? This one should, and this one should. Whenever you have an even index, an even index being an index of a 2, a 4, a 6, or an 8, our index here was the number 2 and you have an odd number of exponent of variables. That's a to the first, that's a to the first. What do you have to place around them to ensure that the answer is positive? Place absolute value bars. We're going to do a quick little example problem. All right, I'm going to say, what is the square root of x to the seventh? The square root of x to the seventh. If we listed that out, glad I didn't do x to the hundred. Four, five, six, seven. How many pairs do I have? Two. So that's going to be x cubed on the outside of the radical. What's still left on the inside of the radical? An x. But what do I have to place around the x cubed? Absolute value because that number is odd. If that number was even, you wouldn't have to do it. If you go back one, it's not that Why well, didn't I have to put an absolute value around this one? Because my exponent was even, it was not odd. All of that to help us with problem number three. We're going to break this down. Here we go. Right now, I have a negative one times 14 squared means that's 14 times 14. A squared is simply A times A. So everybody, what's the square root of negative 1 by itself equal to? Uh, ah. What is the square root of 14 times 14? 14. And what is the square root of a times a? A. All right, so here's your final answer. You have a 14. You have an a, and you have an i, but you've got to put absolute value bars around the 
hey, 